friends welcome or welcome back to my channel in today's video you guys I am so excited I know that some of you guys are not ready for Christmas and some of you guys are not ready to let go of fall so with that in mind I am just gonna give you guys a little mashup so basically in the beginning I'm gonna give you guys a um, compilation of some fall DIYs and then at the end I'll give you guys a compilation of some Christmas DIYs so basically we are saying goodbye to fall and we are bringing in Christmas so I hope you guys enjoy this video I also would like to thank creative live for sponsoring today's video and I will talk about that more in just a little bit so stay tuned because you guys do not want to miss out I'm excited to tell you guys all about it so with all that being said don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it subscribe if you haven't already and let's jump into today's DIYs okay friends so editing me here or just pick Sophia up from school taking a break from editing me I don't know anyway you guys I'm editing my video and I just realized that I did not mention and I have a um, mad Isabella I need to get in the house but I just wanted to let you guys know real quick um, please keep in mind that these videos a lot of the clips are from um, you know when I was pregnant or a couple years ago so the audio is different I sound different just keep that in mind. Um, anyway, with all that being said, let's jump back into today's DIYs. So for my personal favorite of all the projects that I did today, for the pumpkin patch sign, I start by taking two signs and I cut the handles off. Now I got these signs back at Christmas time but um, Dollar Tree always has signs so you don't have to use this particular kind I'm sure not many people have stuff from Christmas or actually if you guys are anything like me then you do but anyway you just take two signs uh, lay them side by side and then take large popsicle sticks and some hot glue and glue them together I then just um, took the stickers off and I sanded down where the stickers were and then took some lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree. I spackled the four holes as well as these signs weren't completely straight. I tried to put them together a few different ways to get um, the middle as straight as possible if you know what I mean and any way that I did it it resulted in the same so I did put the holes towards the outside so that the frame would kind of cover it but just in case I um, filled them with the spackling and then I did fill the middle with the spackling and then I let that dry I then take my square dowels which are also linked down in my Amazon favorites I measure them out for the frame and then take my mini miter saw which again is linked in my Amazon favorites and I cut those down so I don't know what I did with my stain you guys I use this stain all the time I looked high and low and I I don't understand where it went so I just took some water, some Waverly Antique Wax, and some black acrylic paint, and I just mixed it up to make a stain. And I'm actually pretty surprised how well this came out to the color that I wanted it to. Um, when it dries, it's a little bit lighter than I wanted, but I actually got it pretty close to my favorite stain, Jaco Bean. But if you have some stain, just go ahead and use that. And, you know, my preference is the Jayco Bean. But if you have a different preference, then definitely just go ahead and use your favorite stain. So, obviously, once I had it um, mixed up, I then just took a paintbrush and I s painted, stained, whatever you want to call it, my frame pieces. I also wanted to mention that if you guys have not hit the like button, I would 
greatly appreciate it. Those thumbs up really help my channel to grow and help YouTube to notice me a bit more. And as I said in the beginning, if you haven't subscribed already and you love Dollar Tree DIYs, I would love to have you a part of the family. We are slowly but surely growing and I cannot wait to see what the future holds. I will be out for a few weeks because I'm about to have my baby, but I will be uploading until I have her. So once I had the uh, border or the frame stained or painted, I went ahead with my finger sander and I just sanded the spackling down um, as much as possible and you can still see that it's white, but I did sand it down um, as flat as I possibly could. After I did that, I just took my Dyson and I vacuumed up the dust and then took my favorite brush and some ink Waverly chalk paint and I give it a coat. I do not um, try to make this perfect. I wanted some of that brown to show through so that way it would look like it was weathered sign. So I did just take this uh, farm truck or wooden truck from Dollar Tree and I took the hanger off of it and you guys I'm in love with these little trucks I picked up a few of them so that I've so that I would have them but I went ahead and I cut the pumpkins off anyway I just take my ink waverly chalk paint and I give this truck a good coat of the black after I had my truck all painted I took my chip brush and some white Waverly chalk paint and I focused on the details on the truck like the bed of the truck and then around the wheel well and around the edges just to um, give those pieces a little bit of pop and then that way when you're looking at the sign you can see those details and then once I'm done with my dry brushing on the truck I picked up these pack of picks from Dollar Tree and I got three different sizes. There's really tiny ones, a larger one, and a medium one. So I start by taking the sticks out of the bottom and then I just cut these in half with my utility knife. So once I have my pumpkins cut, I then take some Waverly chalk paint in, I believe this is moss. I will leave it um, the name of it down below I, I just am having a brain fart right now but all the orange pumpkins I did paint those with this green color so once I have all my little pumpkins painted I then take whatever was left on my brush and I just kind of highlight the indents in these pumpkins just to give them a bit of dimension and then I did the reverse on the other ones. So for the green ones, I took out the color cashew and I just dipped the edge off. I just dipped the edge of my brush into the paint. I uh, dabbed off the excess and then I highlighted the same thing, just opposite colors on the green pumpkins. I then took some uh, brown Waverly chalk paint and I painted the stems just because the stems were that bright orange and definitely don't want that because it would not look cohesive. I then took out um, these wooden letters and I glued the truck to the middle. I definitely sp spelled pumpkin right. I know I had a lot of comments that I did not spell pumpkin right on my bin and I didn't notice you guys pregnancy brain is crazy um, I definitely wouldn't have noticed if something somebody didn't point it out so thank you for pointing that out and this time I definitely got it right but I did paint all those letters black I then just laid them out on my sign to make sure that they were where I like them to be and then I took some hot glue and I just glued my letters down after that I went on my computer I kind of just found an image that I liked that was like at the bottom I put that into word blew it up and then printed it out after I print it out I take my graphite paper and I trace that on and then again take my black paint pen and go over the wording 
now comes the fun part. I just kind of arranged them um, before I glued them down, got an idea, and then set them aside. And then I just glued them how I thought that they would look okay. So if you don't like the setup that I have here, you can always change out your pumpkins or leave the pumpkin on that was on your truck. So let me know what you guys think, but I'm definitely um, feeling this sign. I'm so tickled with the way it turned out. Anyway, now I'm rambling on, but I just went ahead and glued the frame down. I started with the top, did the sides, and then the bottom to make sure that it fit correctly flipped it over and took a sawtooth hanger those are also linked in my amazon favorites and then that is it and now a word from our sponsor creative live Again, I would like to thank Creative Live for sponsoring today's video. Creative Live is an online learning platform where you can brush up on your skills as an experienced creator, or you can learn new skills from the comfort of wherever you choose. You can learn from the best of the industry's entrepreneurs, photographers, and designers, just to name a few. And once you sign up, you have over 2,000 plus on-demand classes to choose from and the ability to take them all or choose the ones that are right for you. Currently, I'm taking How to Build a Business While Learning Your Craft by Megan Oman. And I love the fact that it honestly feels like a classroom setting. Like I honestly feel like I'm sitting in a classroom full of peers and an instructor. So I really love that feel with Creative Live. So all in all, you get an affordable education to gain the necessary skills to master the subject and I love the fact that you can choose the instructor and you choose the course to suit your needs and you can also do it from wherever you choose and lastly best of all you get 24 7 access to over 2,000 courses that are conveniently available for your download for offline learning so how do you join thousands of creators today on Creative Live's platform? Go to the link in the description box below, follow that link, and when you check out, if you type in the word Crafty10, you'll save $10 on any subscription. And thank you Creative Live for sponsoring today's video. So with all that being said, let's jump back into today's DIYs. So moving on to the house project, um, I wanted to make this look like shiplap. So I just take my ruler and I start at the top. I create lines as thick as the ruler just so that way they can be nice and even. And then I go back over those with my black paint pen. And I do use my fine point paint pen. Over this year I have gotten all kinds of stuff. So I have all different size paint pens and I do have been getting them from the Walmart craft section. I then printed off this give thanks and once again I take my graphite paper and my black paint pen and I go over those um, over the lettering. Once I go over the lettering, then I'm going to take my drill and a drill bit and I uh, drill some holes into the sides. Now I did this on the second line, kind of right where that corner is, and I did the exact same thing on the other side. And then I took some unfinished wooden beads and I put them on a skewer. Um, kind of spaced out so that I could paint them easily and I painted every third bead with the moss color Waverly chalk paint and then every second bead with the white Waverly chalk paint and then left the other ones with that natural wood color. I really enjoy that wood color but I didn't want to just use all wood so I did just paint them a few different colors just to match the rest of the decor that I am making today. So once I had those done then I stuck a piece of jute through the first hole. I knotted it and then cut it off. I then take a piece of painter's tape 
and you always want to paint your ends of your jute if you're trying to string beads just because the jute likes to fray and it's really hard to actually get it into the bead so definitely use something like tape to um, put on the end and then you kind of want to twist the end after you've put the tape on there and then you can easily string your beads through now again i did um, green white and then the natural wood and continued that pattern all the way until i was out of beads and then took my jute stuck it through the other side tied a knot and again i cut the rest of the jute off so once i had the jute cut I then take my uh, chip brush and some ink waverly chalk paint and I just dry brush all the way around this sign. I do dry brush on top as well as the edges. Um, most of the time I'll just do the edges but for this project I thought that it would look nice to dry brush to kind of make it look like wood. Um, I always like this look so let me know in the comments down below if you would leave the middle blank or if you would dry brush it and i also did do the edges as well as the beads just a little bit i didn't do a whole bunch or go crazy on the beads but i did want the beads to look cohesive i then just take the rest that was on my brush and go around the edge of this frame i forgot to mention that i glued the frame down duh <laughs> And then that is it for that project, you guys. That took just a few. So for the first project, I got this pumpkin from Dollar Tree. And I start by taking the tag and that raffia bow off. Uh, when I ripped the bow, it had a little bit of hot glue left over, which I wasn't too worried about because I figured I would put another bow anyway. But I did just sand it down as best as I could. Then took my white Waverly chalk paint and I painted just in between the raised parts. Um, it depends if you're going to do it this way or not, but I probably should have painted the entire thing because whatever I use on those other pieces, uh, you can kind of see through it and um, I just really didn't like that. But again, like I said, it just depends what you use. So you'll either just paint um, the parts that I'm painting right here, or you might just wanna go ahead and give the whole thing a good coat of the white Waverly chalk paint. I really honestly don't think it's gonna hurt anything. So anyway, after I get done painting the middle part, I go ahead and I set that aside to dry. So I took this little uh, decor piece. It says kiss me and it has a cactus. I knew that I wanted to keep that natural wood so I just sanded off the kiss me part. I then just pulled that cactus off. It came off really easily. Um, I didn't have to fight with it or anything. So I think it's probably just held on by some hot glue maybe. Um, not too sure. But anyway, I had this fabric from walmart it's a fat quarter and then i just showed you that dollar tree does have fabric but this was a little bit of a lighter buffalo check so um, i wanted to try that out but i cut a piece of that off of the fat quarter and then took some matte mod podge and i just gave those three pieces that are the exposed wood a really good coat of the mod podge now you guys know if you've been around that I normally don't like to work with Mod Podge because um, if you're using paper it makes the paper wrinkly but because I'm using fabric you definitely want to go with Mod Podge. So once I have a nice coat of the Mod Podge down then I just put my fabric straight down onto it and I smooth out that fabric and I'm just kind of going around feeling where the raised parts are and um, if I see any wrinkles then I go ahead and smooth those out and then once I am satisfied I do another really nice coat of the Mod Podge on top and like I said um, you can kind of feel for it but 
I could see where the raised parts were. So once I was done that little pumpkin, I just take my utility knife onto the pumpkin we put fabric on and I just very slowly go around those pieces and because the Mod Podge is nice and dry and it kind of like hardens up, then the when you go to cut it, it cuts really, really nicely. Just be careful because when you're going around some edges, um, if you don't get it directly onto the outside line of the raised part, then some will come off. So just be careful. I went slow. I did speed this clip up. That's why it looks like I'm going fast, but I just sped the clip up and then once I had little spots that were kind of hard to get with my utility knife, I just took those little mini scissors and I cut the rest off. I then again take my chip brush and some ink waverly chalk paint. I just give that some dry brushing around all the edges including the fabric. I make a simple bow and then I put a bow at the top. And that one is quick and easy as well. I really love quick and easy projects that look high end. So let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. So I take one of these circle decor pieces from Dollar Tree and I take off the sticker on the back as well as the hanger up top. Next, I take my little mini uh, finger zip sander, say, t say that 10 times fast, and I just sand down all of that sticker residue and then I find the middle of my sign. Once I have the middle of my sign marked out, then I take this transfer gather, I cut it up, and I also just kind of lay it out and measure where that gather will fit into the middle. I then mark it off with some painters tape and give the middle a distressed coat of white Waverly chalk paint. Next I tape it off once again once that middle part was dry and then once it's taped off then I give the bottom and the top part a distressed coat of the moss Waverly chalk paint. Now once my transfer was fuzzed, then I lay it out in the middle of my sign and I just kind of line it up where I want it. Once I have it where I like it, then I smooth it down and I use my black chalk paste to transfer that wording onto the middle. I swear you guys, using this paste and these transfers literally never gets old. I could do this all day every day. In fact, I wish that I had the time to, but I just don't have that kind of time. But if I did, I totally would never get tired of using these transfers all day every day. So anyway, once I had the gather transferred on, then I take the greenery that was in this transfer and I just go all the way around this gather with the greenery using the gold, the white chalk paste, as well as using the black paste for the little tiny um, sprigs or you know pieces of greenery and I also went in into the white parts when I used the greenery I used my jade chalk paste that way you could see it so once I had my sign done and I created a bow and glued that down to the left hand side then I take this little glass candle that I have from Dollar Tree and my you are the pick of the patch transfer and just use that to transfer on that pumpkin to the candle just so that way it would go with this sign really well you guys i loved the way that this turned out let me know in the comments what you guys think and i will also have a link to the products used in the comment section as well
so moving on I took this yardstick now if I had wooden rollers from Dollar Tree that is what I would have used but I don't so I just measured out how tall I wanted my cats but I just marked where I wanted them to be cut. I also marked them on an angle and then took them to my saw and cut them. And then I just paint all of these uh, with black Waverly chalk paint. Once I have those all painted, I went on my computer and I probably could have drawn, drew this these eyes you guys but i just do not trust myself and i'm ocd so i like everything to be uniform so i did just cut a cat or i did print a cat out so i just um rubbed the back with the chalk and then that way you can transfer it on that way and then i just traced my eyes on each of these so originally i was going to leave like those little circle shadow in the eyes but once I had them all painted it didn't look right so I just painted over those and I did use white Waverly chalk paint once I had my eyes all done I took my chip brush and some white Waverly chalk paint again and I just dry brush all the way around these cats I then just take some wood glue and I glue kind of like one I glue on the top of the middle part and then the bottom and then in the middle I use some hot glue the wood glue is going to make it last and then the hot glue is going to have them stick together really quickly so that's why I do that but if you want to be patient um I'm so impatient so I want this to uh glue as fast as possible but if you just want to use wood glue that's totally fine or if you just want to use hot glue that's totally fine too and then i just do the same thing on the bottom to glue these down to the base piece last but not least i made three triple bows out of jute and then you, I just use the same technique to make these bows just using three pieces and then I glue them right at the underneath the eyes and that is it for that project. Next project, we're gonna work on the little Christmas trees. So I start by laying out some popsicle sticks and these are the larger ones. My Dollar Tree never has the large popsicle sticks. So I did get these from Walmart, but I see a ton of people using the large popsicle sticks from Dollar Tree. So if you're uh, Dollar Tree has them then definitely pick them up from there but anyway you can see what I'm doing here I just kind of draw out how I wanted my tree once I cut them down I did have to play with the sizing because I didn't really like the way that it looked so cut them down how you want and then before you glue anything just make sure they are um, looking the way you want them to and then you can go ahead and take a square dowel rod. This is a smaller square dowel rod. And then you just glue them down. I wanted these to have spaces. I just like the way that looks better. But if you want to butt them up against each other, that's totally your preference. But I just glue them down with some hot glue. I do the same thing for the smaller one. And then I go in with the same stain, my Jacobian from Minwax, and I stain both of the trees, as well as these little stars I got. Um, I've had them in my stash forever. I, I guess I lost the clip because when I edited, I couldn't find it, but I did cut down the small, the smaller star. It was the same size as the bigger star. 
but I knew that a huge star wouldn't look right on the smaller tree so I did just take scissors and I just followed the existing lines of the star and cut that down smaller so we're going to go back into my Arteza glitter. I couldn't wait to use it again. I wanted gold, but I didn't want it to be really bright. So I just went through and I picked out two colors. One is more of like a bronzy brown. I don't even know how to explain it. And then the other one is a gold. So I just took some Mod Podge and I go heavy handed with this Mod Podge and then I sprinkle the brighter glitter down first not covering the entire thing and then I go in with the bronzy brown color and coat that really really good. Once I had my stars glittered I did set them aside to dry and then we need to make a base and I wasn't really sure what I was going to do for the base but then I remembered that I did pick up these um, square pieces these wooden square pieces from Dollar Tree the other day so you could probably use something smaller I should have probably just used like a um, cut down a stir stick but this is what I pulled out and I'm happy with it. It doesn't look dumb or anything, but it probably would look better with a smaller piece. But anyway, I just gave it a really good coat of white Waverly chalk paint. While I had my chalk paint out, I went in with my chip brush to the trees and I just gave them a coat of the white not covering it completely and doing it more on some of the pieces and less on others. So while I had my white paint out, I did take this sign from Dollar Tree and I just gave that a good coat of the white and before I painted it, I took the sticker off and sanded down the residue and then vacuumed up the excess. This vacuum, I love you guys. It is also linked in my Amazon favorites and I use it every single time I'm crafting multiple times because it's just so easy to pull out and vacuum up your mess as you go. I set that aside to dry and then I took some antique wax and my chip brush and I just dry brushed the wax all, all around the edges as well as in the middle of this block. I glued my stars down and then I glued my trees down right into the middle and once again this project is done I am really loving these trees you guys I think my favorite is in between these trees and the truck but as usual I can't ever pick a favorite but I can't wait to display these little trees they're so rustic and farmhouse I could just like scream I don't even know but sometimes when you have an idea in your head it doesn't always come out like you envision it and this was definitely one of those but I am actually more pleased with the way it turned out than what I had in my head it's kind of funny how that happens sometimes but that's the beauty of crafting sometimes you have an idea and it comes out totally different and it's not always a bad thing so last but not least you guys it's 1 30 in the morning per usual <laughs> but you guys this is when my house is quiet if i voiced over while my house was not quiet you guys would probably click off the video and be like oh my god that's a madhouse <laughs> anyway i took this chalk couture stencil and I will leave a link to the website you can get these stencils they are pricey but you guys they're huge so they're definitely worth it and you can use chalk paint so it comes in layers I did the truck and then you're supposed to do the red part first the red buffalo check or whatever color so do as I say not as I do do the buffalo check first then paint your truck and then you do the tree and then a second layer of the tree to give it some contrast I then took the tree farm I 
didn't have enough room for the whole thing so I did just stencil on the wording tree farm with my ink Waverly chalk paint and then I went in with the established and I painted that in the ink Waverly chalk paint as well to finish this one off I did just take my chip brush I dry brushed all the way around the edges and I love this you guys know I love trucks I'm just a sucker for anything uh, with the farmhouse truck I mean it could be anything and I just fall for it every single time so anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this video as usual I sure enjoyed making it I love each and every one of you with everything I have okay guys 1 30 in the morning me here but you know what tonight I am sitting back relaxing and doing this voiceover for you so first we're going to start off with the gnome i take this little tree from christmas from christmas tree yeah i'm already messing up from dollar tree and i just take this tinsel off of it by cutting it right up one of the sides and then taking it off i then just take this little baby blanket from dollar tree as well and i just kind of wrap it around and measure it at first I start with that corner I had already cut it for something else but um, you can kind of make cut a corner because these corners are rounded rather than um, pointed so I start in a pointed corner that was already cut and then I glue it and then I glue the plastic tree form down and then I just go around and wrap it around and prior to wrapping it I did just measure like the bottom and I cut along that piece just so that I could get it as even as possible and then once I have it wrapped all the way around the tree then I go underneath and I wrap that as well and glue it with hot glue so I found this really cool greenery from Dollar Tree and I knew that I can make this gnome's mustache with this just the way that it is laid out um, that's how I got the idea in my head so I just cut them off the picks I only used two bunches for this and then I just went around using the bigger pieces and I glued them down with hot glue once I had all the main pieces glued, then I went in and I just filled in any bare spots with the smaller branches. So at the top, this didn't really want to stick to it. It kind of kept popping up the pieces that weren't flush with the um, little blanket that was wrapped around. So I just took some jute and I wrapped around the top so that it stayed taut and then um, I went in again and filled out filled in any more blank spots I got this buffalo check uh, tree skirt and I took it out of the package and then I took my measuring tape I was having trouble here because I didn't have like a sewers measuring tape and I just measured around and then I took my ruler and I had this fabric from I believe I got it at Walmart and I thought that it would look really cute as a hat on this little gnome so I measured out the bottom and it was about the length of this um, roller so I just measured the bottom and then I made marks in a point I cut it out and then I just ran hot glue up each side once I did the hot glue I let it set up really good before I messed with it anymore and then I flipped it around I quickly figured out that I wanted um, to fold up the edges so I did turn it back around um, fold the edges and glue that before I did that I made a tassel I wrapped some jute around my fingers a bunch of times I took it off my fingers I tied a knot or I got another piece and then tied a knot at the top holding them all together and then cut the ends and then cut any of the ones that were um, longer than the other pieces 
so I put my tassel aside like I said I glued the bottom pieces up just to have a more finished edge and then I took the fuzzy part of this tree skirt and I just cut that fuzz off originally I was going to try to make a hat out of this tree skirt but because the middle had a hole in it it was not big enough to fit on my little guy's head so I just used the fabric that I had in my stash once I had the fabric cut off of the tree skirt, then I go in with some hot glue and I just go ahead and glue that down. Once I had it glued, I stuck the hat on our little gnome and it still was a little bit big. So in the back, I just glued it together to make it a little bit more tight. Um, what you can do for this is just make the bottom a little bit smaller than I did. So I would probably do eight inches long. And then I fold it over the top of his hat. I took another piece of jute and strung it through the middle of our tassel. And then I just tied it all the way to the end of our hat. So I thought I was done here and then I thought that he was missing a little something so I did make a simple bow out of some ribbon that I got from Dollar Tree. Actually I got it from Walmart. Um, first I made, first I glued down a unfinished wooden bead for his nose right under that um, hat and then here is my bow trick. I usually link a video but I figured for all my new subscribers I would show you this bow trick you will get a perfect bow every single time now I will say it doesn't work too great with bigger ribbon um, I don't I've never tried maybe wrapping it around all four of my fingers and then just opening my fingers in the middle um, if you want you can try it maybe one day I'll try it and let you know but I'm not going to try to explain how to do this because it's already tricky enough and to try to explain it it's just uh but anyway if you need to go back and watch this over and over again you certainly can to learn this trick but once you get it down, it is extremely easy and you will have perfect bows every single time. So once I had my bow all done, then I just took my mini scissors from Dollar Tree and I just cut dovetails in the end. And then last but not least, I glued my bow right to the top of our little tassel. And that is it for this cute little gnome, you guys. I love him so, so much. When I had the vision in my head, I wasn't too sure, but I am really pleased with the way it turned out. So moving on to the last one that is probably my favorite. I don't know. It's in between the gnome and this one. But I took three beware signs. I cut one of them in half. And then on the two longer ones, I cut the edges off where they were kind of like serrated. And then I um, just took a ruler and cut pieces on a slant and then I just used that piece to cut the other pieces um, kind of like a template so 
for the boat for the bigger ones I did um, cut them a little bit longer and then for the ones I cut in half obviously they're a little bit shorter but if that makes no sense you can see what I'm doing here I then just take my large popsicle sticks and I glue all these pieces together once I had all my pieces glued on you want to make sure you use a lot so that this is nice and sturdy I then just used my crimson Waverly chalk paint and I gave it a really good coat of that beautiful red color anyway I take some large popsicle sticks, I measure them on my little slants and then cut them down and then we're going to work on the doors and the windows for this project. So I had these skinny sticks from Walmart and they come in a pack, there's a bunch in there. I cut pieces down for the door, um, I cut one in half and then used two whole ones so obviously the half half pieces are going to be on the top and bottom and then the long pieces are going to be on the side they weren't quite long enough to make the x pieces in the door so i did just take a large popsicle stick i cut the ends off and then took my utility knife to just cut skinnier pieces and i basically cut the larger popsicle stick in four then I just assemble my pieces. Um, once I cut the large, pops, large popsicle stick down, I did cut it down to make the X. And then, like I said, I connected all the pieces. So for the window, I basically did the same thing. I cut the skinny stick down a little bit smaller than half because I wanted my windows skinnier and then I cut a longer piece for the bottom because I wanted it to kind of look like a windowsill and then I took my hot glue I glued that down and then I measured one cross piece for the middle and then three going the other way so basically you're gonna have six panes in this window so once I had that longer piece down um, I don't know if I mentioned that I did lay it down and cut it down to size and then glued everything together I took my white Waverly chalk paint and for the roof pieces and the windows and the barn doors I did give them all a really good coat so while they're drying I take my ruler and I make a mark every three inches then take the ruler and I use my black paint pen and I didn't feel like pulling out my Arteza paint pen again so I did just use the one that was right in front of me because I was on a time crunch and I went over those marks and then surprise surprise <laughs> I take my chip brush and some ink Waverly chalk paint and I just give it a really good coat all the, or a really good dry brushing all the way around the edges and then I start in the middle by going over the lines that I made and then I go in between the lines. You can do that as much or as little as you want but I really like it um, darker on this sign just because it makes it look old and rustic in my personal opinion. I then just printed off this wreath from Google, traced it on with my graphite paper and then I went over it with my green Arteza paint pen and I printed off home and then um, I went over it with my white Arteza paint pen. I also um, printed off for the holidays, traced that on and went over it with the white paint pen as well. And then I took this black cardstock from Dollar Tree. I cut or I traced where the windows are and then cut those out and glued them down just so that way um, I don't know I like the way it looked like this you can let me know in the comments down below if you would leave out the black cardstock or if you would put it on there and then once I had that all cleaned up I just glued down the doors and the windows and although this took me a little bit of time just because you guys I don't like I said before I don't do a trial run so when I'm doing these projects 
kind of figuring out how to get it together is a bit tricky and then to do it again it's really really easy but anyway I went over the doors and the windows with this ink Waverly chalk paint and then that was it you guys I love this sign so 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 much I haven't even decorated for Christmas yet and I already have it up on my little um, cube storage stand or whatever you want to call it but Okay guys, happy Friday. Starting off, I take these little tinsel sleighs from Dollar Tree and I start by just cutting it right down the middle. Now I thought these were kind of weaved, but they're not. So all you have to do is cut down the middle and then just pull the tinsel off of the sides and the bottom. I then do the exact same thing with this little tree and originally I was going to use those presents so I did those as well but you don't have to worry about those because I did not end up using them. So I take this roll of nautical rope. Now Dollar Tree does have some. I could not find some any anywhere and my husband had these out in the shed so he did give them to me he had a bunch of rolls so um i they were from ace hardware and i don't think you would need any more than one roll if you wanted to get a bigger roll but like i said they do have them at dollar tree so i just start by um, going along the bottom part of the sleigh and then I just kind of go back and forth with the nautical rope until I cover that entire bottom part. Once I have that bottom part covered then I go around the sides that connect the bottom to the sleigh and I start by just gluing down the one piece and then I just go around it until the entire part is covered and I just repeat the same step on the other side. I do hot glue the edges to the back once I, I am done covering them and then I take this um, white nautical rope from Dollar Tree and I originally was going to cover this whole part of the sleigh but then I figured out that I wanted to do kind of like a design so I just start by gluing it down to the bottom edge and this sleigh is raised in some parts so as you can see here I do go with the white rope around the bottom part and then at the top part where it's curved as well as in the back where it's curved and then all the other parts that I left open I did just go in with some more of the brown nautical rope and filled those uh, parts of this sleigh in. So I found that the easiest way to glue the rope down after you have your initial first layer on is to just glue it to the existing uh, rope because if you try to glue it straight to the plastic there's not very much to glue to so I found that when I was gluing it it was kind of difficult so like I said if you just glue it to the existing existing rope it's much much easier to glue down once I had both pieces covered and you want to make sure that you're covering the side that's going to match up so you don't want to cover both sides into the front because or you do want to cover both sides in the front because if you cover one on the back one on the front or whatever it's not going to match up when you put your sleigh together so anyway once I had those covered then I do just take some large popsicle sticks and I go over the back part 
I just wanted to kind of close that up and make it a little bit more finished on the back side of each. So I do just lay my popsicle sticks down. I mark where they need to be cut and then I glued them down. For the bottom part where there's nothing to glue with, I did just take some of the little wooden squares from Dollar Tree and glued those down so that I had something to glue to and it ended up being perfect. I then just took this little tray, I cut down some of those large popsicle sticks and glued them to the inside where the handles are and then I just took some lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree as well and I covered in those holes. Once I had the holes covered, then I go in with some of, I believe this is Fawn Waverly Chalk Paint, and I give the back side of this sleigh a coat of this. It matches the brown nautical rope really nicely, so I wanted to match that as close as I possibly could and I was pretty impressed with how good it matched. So once I had the back side painted then I did go in with my little mini sander. This is linked in my Amazon favorites under micro zip sander and I sand down where the handles are. I paint it with that same color and then I take my tight bond and some hot glue to glue the tray into the middle of our little sleigh. I did run a bead of hot glue behind the back side just because where the rope is it did not want to sit flush with it so I did just reinforce it with some hot glue. Next, I take some large popsicle sticks again. I measure out how long I need it because I wanted the back side of the sleigh to be more raised than this little tray was. So I did just cut those pieces down. I measured more of them and I put three in the back and one in the front and I secured that with some hot glue. Next, I just take that same paint once again and I just go over the pieces that I just glued down. Last but not least, I just put a piece of foam into that little tray and then I just cut some greenery that I had off of the picks. Um, I got some from Michael's, some from Hobby Lobby, and then I just decorated the inside how I liked with some little mini pine cones as well. And you can dress this up with some presents or whatever you want to do, but this is what I wanted to do with mine and I am just so in love with the way it turned out. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. Moving on to our little Christmas tree, I did want to cover this color green because I had a feeling that you were going to be able to see through here. So I did just want to make sure that if you saw through it, then you wouldn't see this bright green color since I am using some more neutral colors. So we're going to make tassels. I just took a piece of cardboard and I measured the top piece of how long that I would need my tassels. Now, I cut it exactly the same size. I would recommend to do it just a little bit longer so that your tassel hangs over because once you tie it, it kind of bunches it up a little bit shorter. So in the end, it didn't really matter, but I definitely do recommend to make it a little bit longer. But you just want to wrap it around. I did 25 times and I think it was probably the perfect amount. So I then cut the string. I cut off two pieces and I put one piece through while it was on the cardboard and tied that right at the top into a double knot. And then I pulled it off the cardboard and then I tied another knot around the top 
to make it bunch up at the top. Now, once I did this a few times, I did start wrapping them around my hand and my hand my hands are pretty small because as you go down the tree until you get to the bottom piece, um, they're a little bit smaller anyway. So once I did get down to the bottom piece, I did just use it around or wrap it around my palm rather than my fingers and I didn't have an issue. So I would just try it if they're too small or too big, then you can make adjustments, no big deal, but it was much easier to wrap it around my hand. So once I had that other piece tied, then I do just take my scissors and cut the bottom pieces apart. I then just set that aside and I made three for the top and then I went down a number for each um, layer so the I went three four five six and then for the bottom piece I did make two uh, jute tassels just to cover the stem part and I did get this ribbon at Michael's it was on clearance for three dollars and then I also had a coupon so I think I got this ribbon for like 75 cents so um, definitely a good deal for all these colors and it's really really nice quality but um, the white ribbon I did get from Dollar Tree so you can definitely get get it at Dollar Tree. My Dollar Tree just didn't have any colors other than black and white. So it's really up to you. You can do Christmas colors. You can do whatever your little heart desires. But anyway, once I had all my tassels made, then I did just glue them down to my tree. Um, once I had all my tassels glued down, and you guys, I love the way this turned out. I think it is so stinking cute. But um, once I had my tassels glued down, the trunk part was kind of tricky. I wasn't really sure how I was going to do it. So I did figure out that because the trunk sits off of the bottom of the tree there were these slats at the bottom so I did just squeeze the top of the tassel in between those slats and then glued it down and then I just flipped it over and trimmed the bottom once I trimmed the bottom then I did just trim the rest of the layers just so that they looked more finished and then I had a wooden star I took my Mod Podge brush. These brushes are also linked in the description box under my Amazon favorites. And then I took some glitter from my Arteza glitter. Arteza is also linked in the description box. I have a box of like 40 jars or something and I love it so much. It's such nice glitter. Um, you can really get glitter from anywhere though. but. Anyway, um, I just pour my glitter on top of the star and then glue it to the top and look how gorgeous this turned out. Moving on to our last but not least project, I do take two beware signs. I cut off the tags, flip them over, and then use some large popsicle sticks and some hot glue to glue these signs together. Now you can glue the popsicle sticks long ways or up and, up and down. It's totally up to you. I kind of did a combination of both just to ensure that it would stay together nicely. And then I took this chalkboard paint from Dollar Tree and I gave it a really nice coat. Once I gave it a coat, and I did use my favorite, favorite brush. The brush is really nice and big so that it cuts your painting time in half and it also gives a really nice smooth finish. Anybody who ever buys them, they are linked in, the, in my Amazon favorites. If you click the title, a box will appear and that is where the description box is for those of you who don't know. But everybody always tells me, you're right, these are the best brushes. So anyway, 
I did take another transfer. This is the Christmas tree. Sorry about that, guys. I had a little tingle in my throat, but I wanted it to be extremely simple. So I did just do the wording in white and then the tree in gold. And then I had these pit berries already wrapped around each other in red and gold. So I thought that it would be a nice touch to wrap it around the top three times. And then I wrapped it around the bottom once. And then that was it for that one, you guys. My chalk couture information is in the description box below. Um, if you guys want to become part of my team or shop my site, I will have all the transfers and all those links in the description box. Thank you guys so, so much for stopping by. Okay, friends. So that was it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed uh, saying goodbye to fall, bringing in Christmas, and I would also like to thank Creative Live for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget to check the description box, follow the link, and type in the code ALLTHINGSCRAFTY10 at checkout for $10 off any subscription. If nobody has told you today, you are absolutely stunning, you are worthy, and I love you with all my heart and soul. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe and become part of my crafty family if you haven't already and tap that notification bell so that way you don't miss any content in the future and with all that being said have an amazing week and I'll talk to you guys soon bye